I mean, how do you become a first time home buyer in this crazy world that we live in? Don't worry. I'm going to walk you through some steps. I'm going to educate you a little and you're going to feel so much better at the end of this video. Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to the Real Justine Priestley channel. I am the Real Justine Priestley, your local realtor with a twist here in the greater Vancouver area. And in this video, we're gonna walk through some steps that first time home buyers need to know. Because I'm a realtor, I'm obviously going to say that the first step and the first thing you do is you find a realtor. Caveat here, this doesn't have to be your first step. I think very legitimately that your first step could be planning your money and finding a mortgage specialist, which I'm putting at step number two. So what do you look for in a realtor? Well, honestly, I think the best thing to do is to A, ask your friends, people that you know, like, and trust, if they own a house or if they've been involved with any real estate, if they love their realtor, and can they please refer you to their realtor? then that doesn't mean you've made a decision. Then you meet that realtor, you chat with them, you ask them some questions and you basically just see if you like them and if you trust them and if they sound like they know what they're talking about. Some realtors may have 50 years experience, but they just don't jive with you. You know, maybe they don't call you back quickly. Maybe they don't pay attention to you when you're talking. Maybe they're looking at their phones. I don't know. Just find someone that you feel comfortable with and safe with, who communicates with you in a way that makes sense to you. Look for someone who has the heart of a teacher. Here's a tip. Please don't work with a realtor who wants to work as a dual agent. What that means is a realtor who is selling a house, they have a listing, and then let's say you walk in an open house and they want to help you help you buy the house. That's a dual agent. How can they represent the buyer and the seller. Please don't use any dual agents. And remember, as a buyer, you're not paying for the real estate services. That's the seller's job. So find yourself a great realtor and they're kind of free. <laughs> That's good, right? Speaking of that, great time to smoosh the like. One reason that I'm putting find a good realtor as number one on this list is because if you come to me, for example, or many of my colleagues, we will recommend you to our favorite mortgage specialist or banker or lender or mortgage broker. I never get a kickback from this, but I do benefit from it. And the reason is this. If I send my buyer to work with my mortgage guy, Sean Chapman, if you want to watch a video with me interviewing my mortgage guru, Sean Chapman, you watch this video right here. I know for a fact that their pre-approval is going to be solid, super solid. Step number two is a complicated one. It's planning your money. And it's also finding your mortgage specialist. I believe in mortgage specialists. A lender is never a financial planner. So you want to have someone looking after your mortgage and your money and you over the long term, not just one transaction sell you a product which is called a mortgage. I would like you to be with someone who has a long term relationship with you, who's going to look after you and actually care about you after the mortgage. You could still call them for help and advice anytime. Part of this step too is planning your money. So if you don't have a very specific budget that's been all written down, I recommend you do that. You need to know exactly what your income is and exactly what all your outgoing is so that when you go to see your mortgage specialist, you have all the numbers in place so you can really talk about moving forward and getting pre-approved for your mortgage. I just want to say here that what I do is I help buyers and sellers overcome the stress and worry of moving by being in their corner every step of the way. I'm never too busy for calls or emails reach out anytime. I'm here to help and I'm here for you. Step two should be free. There should be no fee for this consultation with a mortgage specialist or a lender. If they're charging you a fee, for me, that's a red flag. Realtor tip, when you're talking to your mortgage specialist, make sure to tell them that it's your first time buying. Many states and provinces have incentives and grants for first time home buyers. Yay! 
a mortgage specialist who really cares about you is going to make sure that you don't end up house poor. What that means is you can qualify for a mortgage, maybe a very large mortgage, but if you don't take into consideration all your other expenses and what your monthly outlay is going to be, you could end up with all of your money or most of your money going just to the house, to the mortgage and the insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what they call house poor. So you're making your payments and you've got your house around you, but you have no money left for anything else. And we don't want that. You don't want to be house poor. You still want to go on vacations and buy new shoes, right? And here are some really important tips. Once you start the process with a mortgage specialist or whoever you're working with, don't make any big changes. Don't, don't, don't quit or change your job. Don't, don't, don't make any major purchases. Like don't go buy a new car and don't, don't, don't miss any payments. Missing or being late for just a couple of days on one credit card payment could really affect your credit score. And again, just like with realtors, shop around. If you speak to one mortgage specialist and you don't fall in love with him or her, speak to some more, interview a bunch of people. It's a job interview, right? You can be the boss, you're hiring. Step three is making a wants and needs list. First, you might wanna start with non-negotiables. Let's say you have two cars, so you definitely need to be able to park those two cars somewhere. Let's say you need two bathrooms, but you want an updated kitchen. Wants, needs, non-negotiables, and your wish list. Just write everything down. Dream big, but be willing to compromise and know which ones you're willing to compromise on. That's what that list is about. Once you have this list, share it with your realtor. That's really going to help them help you find the right home. Another list that might be very useful at this stage is your whys. Why are you buying? Why do you want to move? If you get clear about the why that you're doing something, when the stress and the worry that may come along, you'll know why you're doing it. Step four is the extra, extra fun part. That's looking at properties. I love looking at properties. I love taking clients around to look at stuff. 